Hi, I'm Austin from Mountain Boy Journal. Today, me and Mom are showing you what we do with the chickens. Um, we put those doors in so we could go inside and clean out all the poop that's inside if there's too much. <laughs> right over here is where we in these trash cans, there's different food. Okay, and what different foods do you feed them? Scratch, copper, get out of there. Okay. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Just keep going, you're good. Okay. Um, Sometimes you gotta reprimand the kids. And we have scratch, um, laying pellets. Get what the other name of it is called. The grit. Grit. Yep. And can you explain the difference between the different feeds? Obviously, the laying the pellets are for laying. Right. And <coughs> the scratches to warm them up. Mm -hmm. Don't know what exactly grit is supposed to do. Grit helps them process their food um, because. <coughs> They don't have a whole lot of grit in there anymore. We just had two, two weeks of rain, two and a half weeks of rain, so it's pretty muddy right now. But um, mm -hmm. the grit allows them, to, it helps them to process their food. Um, he's being awfully noisy, isn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So now, explain the water. Um. Sometimes we put cold or hot water. The hot water is to help them lay on the cold days. They don't, lay if <laughs> they don't lay if they don't have something warm. Or if they're too cold. Yeah. Yeah. So by heating their water, and it's hard in the wintertime because of being off grid, because we don't have anything to heat. You can get water heaters for the um, watering troughs and the watering um, containers, but... If you had metal bowls, you could just put like a little... Make a little flame and then have something to cover it. You could, so but... So that it wouldn't, they wouldn't get burnt by it. Yeah, but it's easier in the morning to give them the warm water and to fuss with that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, but if you didn't have any... Like power to say, and you couldn't get hot water. That would be another solution. Possibly, I guess. Yes. And then your dad built the the bowl, the rings for the bowls because they were spilling those constantly. So that worked out real nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. What else are you gonna show everybody? Um, the egg. Okay. And what can you do with the coop in the winter time? To help them lay eggs. Put something in there, like a heater. It would have to be covered, though. Yeah, the other thing. Burn a lot of the feathers out. And and lighting is the other thing that I was yeah. thinking. With the lighting, that helps kind of fool them in the winter time, because you have shorter days and less sunlight. So, there are actually solar lights that we have that we um, can utilize in the coop. Um, you know, kind of like a ready light that you can put in there to help add additional lighting to help kind of force them to lay. Okay, what are you going to show us there? Um, we have some golf balls. I don't know which. There's two eggs in here. Sweetness. That's always good. We'll get those then. Yep. You're looking for the golf balls? Yeah. Well, maybe just explain. If I could show you, I'd make my better. All right. I believe there's one right down here. Yeah. Yep, here. Okay. On the golf balls, or when they look at it, they think it's another egg and decide to lay. Yeah, it kind of entices them to lay. The other thing that it helps with is because it's hard and they peck at it, it doesn't crack, so they kind of give up on pecking at their own eggs because sometimes when they're bored... They decide to peck at their own eggs, and that's not good either, because if you're feeding them, you want to be able to get as much as you can out of them. So, 
All right. So we're going to put that back in there. And this is a really cool setup. Why don't you explain how your dad did that? Um, he, he made the doors, and there's, like, a little rod that goes down this way that holds up all five doors on each level. And then there's these little pieces of metal that hold those bars up with two screws in some areas. And inside, there is a original chicken coop. Yep, the that... laying boxes. Uh-huh. Laying boxes, I should say. It's all right. <clears throat> it's all right. The older ones, not the newer ones nowadays. I don't even know what they look like. Probably the same. Probably the same. But these are, these, um, Glenn's parents and grandparents were one of the largest, um, bird farms, chicken farms, um, and rabbit and, farms in, uh, eastern Pennsylvania. So they had lots of extra, uh, components because they were no longer raising the chickens. So those were fortunate enough to come out here with us. But, um, so you have easy access to the eggs and easy access for cleaning on the other side. And um, maybe you want to mention about um, to people that are all over the country about choosing chickens because that makes a difference too. We talked about that before, you and I, Austin, and they have to do what as far as when they go to purchase chickens, what do they want to look for? Yes, the best laying. That's well, and that's that brings up a good point too, because there's actually laying chickens and there's also meat chickens, mm -hmm. and there's some that are good for both. But you're gonna want to um, check um, your area and 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 what's a better chicken for your climate. Um, the Australorps are good for here in Idaho because of the cold weather. So you have to check into your climate and what, what chickens are best. And the other thing is when you're getting animals, you can always connect with farm, local farmers and kind of pick their brain too. Um, I'm sure they'd be willing to assist you in getting information. Do you have something else you want to add? Not that I can think of. Okay. Well. So see you next time and God bless.